on set is the Adjutant General of the Delaware National Guard, Frank Vavala. Thank you so much for being here, General. It's great to be with you, Shirley. Thank you. Over 15 years as head of the Delaware National Guard. Long time. <laughs> what changes? You had to have seen some changes in all of that time. Oh, tremendous changes. Probably the largest change was really us moving from a strategic reserve to a truly operational force in the aftermath of 9-11. So our, our resourcing has changed. Uh, the fact that we deploy our personnel on a regular basis has changed. So there have been a, a lot of significant changes regarding our Delaware Army and Air National Guard. I know you were talking about <clears throat> changes in the mission readiness. What does that mean for, for someone at home? Well, what it means is our ability to be able to prepare for a multifunctional role, a role not only of homeland security, mm -hmm. but in overseas operational capabilities. So we become a full spectrum force. We're able to satisfy the needs of the state in emergency operations and, and otherwise, and also to take care of our uh, overseas commitments that uh, we have for the United States Army and Air Force. Now the 238th was recently welcome home. My husband is in that unit, right, so right. very a great happy. Great military spouse, <laughs> and I'm sure you're related. Yeah, I am. Um, family and friends have all been asking me, "Is he home for good?" Now I say an Army wife knows better right. than to answer that question. Yeah, but you, you probably could answer it. <laughs> I can't guarantee that he's home for good, mm -hmm. because again, it's going to depend on what our commitments are around the world. And with Army Aviation, they've been spinning on a, a real rapid rotation. Mm -hmm. Used, it's been about every one in every three years. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hope, hopeful that that is going to uh, change and that the, the rotations will be further apart. And we're also hopeful, that, you know, we're, we in the military always hope for peace in the world where we're not going to have to deploy our personnel, but there are certainly no guarantees. Well, speaking of deployments, are there any that are scheduled for any of the Air or Army units? Right now, the only future scheduled deployment is our fixed wing, wing aviation detachment. And they're scheduled next March, March of 2015, to go to Djibouti in the Horn of Africa. Uh, you, you realize, too, that the sister unit of the 238th, the 126 Air Ambulance Unit, is presently in Kuwait supporting operations there. Now, the, um, mm. the rumor is active duty Army and Air Force guys are, are getting <clears throat> essentially what are known as or pink slips while they're on deployments. This is all due to some of these Department of Defense cuts that are going down. And, and I'm wondering, with the active component downsizing, is that good news? for guard units and the Delaware National Guard? You know, you think it would be, and as we continue to draw down in Afghanistan and other places, but not so much, particularly in the Army's case, because the Army is not only gonna reduce their active component force structure, but they're looking at reducing the National Guard's uh, force structure. Right now, we're at about 355,000 in the Army National Guard throughout the United States, the three, three territories, and the District of Columbia, which all have a National Guard. And they want to bring us down to 335,000. And if sequestration uh, hits in, it's going to take us down to 315,000, which is significant. And we in Delaware could consequently lose one unit in a 335 drawdown and another unit in a 315 drawdown. So that would be a significant uh, reduction for us in our Delaware Army National Guard. On the air side, we are continuing to uh, maintain our strength, but uh, we don't have a lot of positions open now to be able to absorb folks from active duty on the air side. And if we come down in strength on the Army side, it will be difficult for those individuals to find a home in our organization. <clears throat> and for the life of me, I can't figure out why the Army would want to bring down the Army National Guard because when you look at us, we're a third of the cost of an active component uh, soldier. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do with the fact that you use us as you need us. Mm -hmm. Our folks return to their civilian world, to their civilian jobs, and they come on active duty when they're needed. 
So I think it's extremely important for us to maintain the strength of the National Guard. We're the best led, best equipped, uh, most versatile force that we've ever had, most veteran force and uh, best trained force that we've had in the history of our National Guard. And I believe that we, mean, we need to maintain that force structure. Even if you bring the active component down, you need to leave us at our present levels. And you also need to continue to resource us with, with both equipment and with monies to be able to train so that we're ready to plug the gap if needed. If they downsize the active component, though, and then they want to downsize the guard, then what's to say of this instability going on in the Middle East with ISIS? Do you see the military as a whole yeah, as a, at a disadvantage and, and I, the guard at a disadvantage? I, I, I do. I do because it won't take long if we don't get if we don't continue to be able to get the monies for training and we don't get equipment before we start to atrophy as a as an army national guard because we're just not using the capabilities we need to be prepared to be able to plug in if needed to support our national objectives all right well so much more to talk about and cover but we are out of time general vavala thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us you can catch this entire interview online at newsworks.org delaware